Thank you for tuning in to Glitter and Gossip on WBUZ 95, where we add a little sparkle to your night. I am your host, Kelly hutchinson Shapwe, bringing it in with my co-host, the raging Cajun, Miss Christy Langwa. Hello, Christy. Good evening, Kelly, and thank you for having me, and thank you for tuning in tonight, um, where every Thursday night we have a brand new episode at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yes, ma'am. And tonight we also have Miss Jennifer Myers. Let's welcome Jen. How you doing, girl? Hello, everyone. Excited to be here. Yes, yes. And our favorite host to Guilty Till Proven Fabulous, Miss Kelly M, is going to be with us for this whole hour tonight. We're so excited to have her. Hello, Kelly. Hey, y'all. How are y'all doing tonight? We're doing it. We're doing it. So, y'all, I want to talk about... Essence Fest and the Power of Influence Awards. I want to talk about that. I want to bring all that up, bring back all those fabulous memories of this weekend. Um, we had a weekend in New Orleans um, for a festival, um, giving out awards for the Power of Influence. Um, so we have interviews that only your girls from WBUZ95 <laughs> can bring you, Okay. We're pretty much had a successful night. Tonight we'll be inter- having interviews from Juvenile himself, uh, Manny Fresh, and we'll featuring um, the young Jay Barnett. He is a young author who has written two fabulous books that I know of so far. Also, um, I want to talk about Christy. Christy. Christy Look wasn't now. able to make it, and I'm super no, sad. Can. So was your day successful Saturday? It was. I was very upset once I found out that I was not going to be able to make it. Um, I was quite excited to be able to go. But um, it's the perils of having um, another job of being a hairstylist and being a pretty popular one. Cause yes. I was, <laughs> I was so booked that I, there was no way for me to cancel or even move appointments to be able to go with y'all. Um, but fortunately I was able to stay at work and um, I was busy and I was blessed to be able to take care of my clients and make them look and feel beautiful. And I rocked out a bunch of beautiful hair And if anybody's interested in seeing it, you can check it out on um, my Instagram at Christy, K-R-I-S-T-I underscore L-A. And um, it's nothing but hair, but it's all the hair that I do. So you can check me out. That's very awesome. Christy um, works at my salon. It's the hair show. And you can see us at the hair show. Very simple. Um, Kelly works there as well. She's a makeup artist, super fabulous, making people feel and look fabulous all day, every day is our life. Jennifer does the same thing, just on a different angle. She's more into like, I don't know, fashion. We do the hair, she does clothes. So we're like a dream team over here. Yeah, but if you come into the salon, you'll probably see Jen lurking around our salon too. <laughs> or I'm lurking around her. All right. <laughs> yeah, one of those. Yeah. We're all over that shopping shopping. center. (laughs) Yeah, I'll be in the middle of the day and be like, "Um, I don't like my shoes. Yeah. Oh, I wore my new red kimono today, Jen. I loved it. Yay, I love a good kimono. It's like my (laughs) go-to for the summer. Yes. She was looking quite Jimmy Buffett, and I dug it because it's so in style. (laughs) Floral prints are in. Hashtag floral. And Christy was rocking it. Oh, yeah, it's, like, it's red, and it's, like, super big, floral, oversized, and I just felt like I was in a retirement home in, like, Florida or something like that, and I but loved hot, it. But because you had, like, some cleavage hanging, chilling, you know, doing totally. it. Well, of course. <laughs> I enjoyed it, but hot. I feel like I should have been in a retirement home, but I enjoyed it. I would definitely plan on wearing full florals every day of my life after 65. Straight up. <laughs> Every day. Like Super Jimmy Buffett style. <laughs> Cheeseburgers in paradise all over my shirt. You Straw know that he's opening his yeah. own um, uh, retirement community. Oh, well, well of course. Does he own shirts. <laughs> <laughs> he's opening up his own retirement community now. So 
you know, oh, that'll be interesting. All mm -hmm. those parrot heads can hang out together. A lot of and cheeseburgers. What, yeah. That's oh, what yeah. Jimmy Margaritaville. Buffett fans, <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Buffett fans are uh, known for. Like, that's what they're named. Parrot heads. What are they named? Parrot heads. Parrot like heads? The, yeah. Like the parrot. I remember the back in the day, my parents went <laughs> to Jimmy Buffett concerts, like, all over the place. Yeah. They, there's, like, Polaroid pictures of my parents, like, <laughs> All jolly looking with like holding on two handfuls of lays, like, woo, look at me. Dad's got like lays all the way down his arms, like, you know, they have fun that night. And all, all I could hear was like cheeseburgers in paradise, that song, like going on and on for like the next couple of weeks because they were still pumped about it. So that cassette was just rolling through, flip, rolling through. <laughs> That's funny. Old I Jimmy. actually just went to uh, an Eagles concert in New Orleans, I don't know, like a week and a half ago. And I bet um, a lot of your parents' crew was there. <laughs> yeah, speaking of New Orleans, um, on the 21st, I'm going to be going to a murder mystery dinner there. And I'm going to have to tell you all, all about it. Um, apparently, you can get tickets or you can do your a private show or you can do parties or you can just go in like and, you know, choose like your level, I guess, of how much you want to pay or where you want to sit or how big of a role you want. But um, Adam and I are going to do a murder mystery. Y'all should come. It's going it to be so fun. It sounds super fun. It's I like you it. go in role play. And we're going to be cowboys. So I get to wear like, <laughs> I'm going to wear something so ruffly and stupid. And I wish that somebody would be there that could look at me and I could look at them and be like, yeah, I know. I'll look stupid. Yeah, you know. Are you going to be like Westworld style? Oh, I was thinking about like straight Pocahontas in it and just like doing like an Indian. <laughs> okay, well, that's not a cowboy. <laughs> I know, but there was Indians, and I am Native American. <laughs> like, can't there be one? <laughs> They're going to be stealing your land, taking your people. <laughs> can't I play it from the floor? You got to learn. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, I really want to do Indian, but I don't know what my, like, role is, you know? Like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be some saloon girl or whatever so i don't know i don't think it, they would let indians in back hooker? in the day yeah i could just be a dirty pirate hooker <laughs> it's always so, a good choice. <laughs> well, right like fun <laughs> so i wanted to talk to y'all and ask you what your favorite most memorable moment was at the power of influence awards what y'all like what were y'all feeling hmm Mm. I don't know. Definitely mine was interviewing Juvenile, for sure. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. I loved PD. I loved PD, the radio host. He was cool. Um, he was awesome. I met so many awesome people, um, and it was so awesome. So, Jennifer, you got to interview Manny Fresh. Hello. How was yeah, that? Yeah, it was so awesome. Um yeah, you guys were kind of around the corner um, by the uh, photos, and somehow he made it around the corner, and I think it was maybe Byron, the guy that um, was organizing yeah, the, the event. event. Yeah. He came up to me and was like, oh, I only got five minutes. Uh, we got to interview Manny real quick. And I was like, sure. Um, Perfect. Sit yeah. Down. <laughs> so it was just me and Manny sat down and it was super quick, but he's just like a really genuine, nice guy. Um, well, I I'm exactly so excited what to I hear. Thought he'd be. Yeah, I'm so excited to hear the interview. That's awesome. I love it when people surprise you in a awesome way, kind of like I surprised you in an awesome way by being so <laughs> fabulous because I'll never get over it. Um, anyway. Um, let's hear that clip from Manny Fresh. Let's listen to that video, that All interview. Right. I'm so excited. Yeah, let's go. So, how does it feel to be here at the Power of Influence Awards? Um, I mean, it's a beautiful and cool honor. I mean, it's a, look at this, this is a dope award man expression yeah. every every one of my get i mean i feel like i'm still relevant still cooking and still cracking so i'm happy to be here definitely and um also in your hometown yes um so it's got to be a very 
uh, yeah. comforting feeling? Very, very. I mean, in essence, it's been around now that I, I know 25 years coming to New Orleans. That's crazy. And I think I've been going for 25 years, so that makes me a big party animal. But now I get an award for coming for 25 years. So yeah. That's cool. Yeah, definitely. That's great. So, um, how do you feel about uh, the, the future for you, too, now after this? Um, I feel like my future is bright. It's going to be bright. <laughs> I'm going to keep working and keep doing what I do and, you know, and, and just let things fall in place. That's the best that I can do. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank We're you. We're really happy to see you here. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. And that was the legendary Manny Fresh. Loving him. I love that Jennifer had the opportunity to interview him. So tell us about that, Jen. Yeah, I mean, just a su super genuine guy. Um, I, I, uh, it was a really you know quick interview because he was in and out of that place in like five minutes. He had a um, another gig to go to to DJ at New Orleans, which is really cool that he still DJs all over New Orleans. But um, I mean, yeah, like just a legendary New Orleans producer and DJ. Um, he was uh, w one half of the big timers and big timers he, is one of my favorite groups ever. Yeah, classic. Yeah, I think we were rock rocking some uh, recently. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, acting the fool as usual. But so he helped to sell over 20 million records. Um, cause you know, he wrap your mind around that. If he got a yeah. dollar per record. Oh yeah. I mean, if he got $2 per record, mm -hmm. like, like, oh my God, like he's probably spent so much money in his lifetime. <laughs> like so much. I don't even know what I would spend. I probably, I would probably spend it on the same things he spent it on. Probably new house, new shoes. Yeah. That's me. New playing. <laughs> like I would have probably spent it on the exact diamond drizzling and diamonds yeah it'd be fun it would be fun but yeah he did work he um did beats on the carter for lil wayne um i mean he's been in the industry since the 80s i mean his dad was a dj so in new orleans and so he started djing um and then how he really um made it was because of baby uh birdman actually started his own label and got Manny to do like you know the beats and be the main producer and then they signed Juvenile and Lil Wayne all and little, just a little crazy I know right and a little boy yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean like so many big names came out of cash money it's crazy they're awesome yeah and he was just such a normal genuine dude he was so sweet I really enjoyed talking to him for just that second. And said, do y'all remember said? I remember interviewing said. I think um, he was cool as hell. He had he gave a shout out to like oh, Cedric. Every, yeah, yeah, everybody. Yeah, he was everybody. awesome. He was yeah. so cool. He yeah, knew I everybody. Yeah. So I also want to talk about our girl Kayla that stepped in for Christy over the weekend, um, and how she is a strong, fierce, independent black woman. And that is my girl. That is my Kayla. And that's my impression because that is what she sounds like. Like, um, excuse me. That's my girl. She's very sharp, wit witty. She's brilliant. She was a valedictorian of her class. She is about to get her doctorate at LSU. She is amazing. Her name is Kayla Stanley, and I love her. Um, she's she, yeah, she's so cool. She's under the weather today, so she can't be with us. But we are wishing her well. And, um, yeah, Kayla had a moment where she was ranting, and Jennifer hit that record button, and Kelly and I just listened and laughed, and it, it was great. Kayla is a trip. So, any any stories about Kayla y'all want to throw out while we have an opportunity, and she's not here to fight us? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's going to say, you're welcome for my ticket, Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, That's all I got. Yeah. yeah she appreciated it. She awesome. had a lot of fun. She had a lot of yeah, fun. The, yeah. She did. She I'm was glad. enjoying herself. <laughs> yeah. So um, our next uh, interview is Kayla Stanley. You can follow her on Instagram at Kayla Stanley or on Facebook at Kayla Stanley. And she is a force to be reckoned with. This is Kayla Stanley.
to time looks slow. And it's just like, I know I have so many things that I have to work on, but somebody's looking up to me. I'm somebody's role model. I don't know who, but I'm somebody's role model. So I have to have my stuff together so I can be that role model. And, and I mean, it gets hard and, and you fall. And it's just like, you'll get it together one day and you, you, you trying, but for real, someone like, Pouring into your life and letting you know that you are that young queen, that you're more than what the media and what you see on TV tries to portray you as, that you are more than that degree and more than what you think you are, it's a bunch. So I, I, I appreciate. Yes. That was yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Go off. Go off. Go off. She's the black queen of I know. I got you. And that was Miss Kayla, my BBF. Um, love hearing her. She always has such a very strong opinion about everything. And I love seeing her and hearing her in that element. So, snaps for Kayla, my girl, who is under the weather tonight. Otherwise, we'd have her on with us. She um, is having some life changes. So, <laughs> anyway, that's Kayla, my girl. Yeah, I had so much fun with her coming with us this weekend, though, too. I wish she could be here with us. Ditto. Yeah, she's um, awesome. So I was looking through some of my files on my phone, and I found about 40 or so clips of us singing going down the <laughs> interstate. <laughs> okay, yeah. I got, I got, got all the snaps. Of, yeah, I was looking at them today, too. I didn't finish them. I, I mean, I saw, watched some I and then any. came back I, to them. I haven't looked back. Yeah, it was, I it was watched, pretty awesome. I watched just, every it, one of them in real time. Oh, God. Yeah, I think we're having recorded the entire car ride. Yeah, major jam session. Yeah, definitely. Like 80s, 90s, R&B. Yeah, we were singing, like, <laughs> all of it. The West Side. bump and grind. I don't see nothing wrong. <laughs> Kelly okay, loves I'm good stop. karaoke. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> put a microphone <laughs> in my one hand and a little cocktail in the other, and you got Mariah Carey. Okay, because <laughs> I be feeling like Mariah. So um, another person that we had the grace of meeting was Jay Barnett. He was pretty awesome. And Christy, what do you have to say about Mr. Jay? Super well, after, cute. Did you follow him? Yes. After y'all came back and told me about all the fun y'all had and all this nonsense and all the people y'all met, I, um, Jay Barnett is one of the names that I did not, uh, offhand know. So I went and, um, started following him and looked him up and everything. And, um, he is a very good looking, uh, young fella. Yes. And he is. he is actually a former NFL player turned author and motivational speaker that and he actually created the me project and the we project for teens who struggled with depression and suicide to help them um, um, with those situations because that's how he grew up he um, struggled with depression and everything and actually attempted suicide and um, he is kind of like a, a youth youth minister to help you know help them give them like an outlet so that they don't feel so much yeah. alone he's awesome like he's right up my alley like as far as like his you know wanting to like reach out to people i love it i love that he was doing all that like i even took a he was given being given an award and i was video like i was listening but he like you know there was so much going on and he like caught me like i heard him and i look over and i'm like listening to every word he said and it was just so powerful and I could just I wanted I, I got his book I'm gonna read it I'm excited but everything he said was just like so sweet and kind and motivational and just honest and pure and true and you could tell like he loved God and he just had a lot going on for him and so let's listen to um our interview that I had with uh Jay Barnett
This is Kelly with WBUZ95 with Glitter and Gossip. We're tuning in tonight for the power of influence on Essence Fest. We are talking today with some guys, and we were wanting to know what they feel about this event tonight. Cool. So I'm Jay Barnett. I'm an author and an international speaker. So I had an opportunity today to share one of my poems, Beautiful Butterfly, from my book for young ladies, Letters to a Young Queen. So just grateful for the opportunity to be on the platform to celebrate and honor so many great people, not only just uh, in the hip-hop in industry, but women uh, that represent power, women of influence, women that are, you know, making some moves. So, Jay, do you have any daughters, or is this just something that comes from your heart? Uh, no, I don't have daughters. Uh, I have two sisters, but I've worked with young people ever since I was a teenager in my dad's church. And so I've always had a heart for young people to, um, to really help guide them and to yeah. really steer them. So after my parents divorced, I kind of lost my way. So uh, for me, this is uh, just my mission, uh, my life purpose, uh, to build young people. And as you know, in the world of social media, that we have, um, we have a lot of challenges with uh, the young people struggling with their identity crisis, uh, with, with struggling with their identity, just trying to figure out who they are. So if I can help them navigate with my books, with my words, then that's just, um, it means that my life means something while I'm here. So. Yeah, you're living like exactly what I'm trying to do in my life in the future. You're doing it right now. Like I'm trying to become a full-time motivational speaker, like talking about body image, self-esteem, helping young girls like love themselves, forgive yourself. Who gives a shit what happened to you five years ago? Love yourself anyway. And I feel like whenever you were telling that poem, like it hit me. I wasn't even paying attention to what was going on and it like got me. You had my 100% attention and it like touched my soul and I just want to thank you for that opportunity and I, I did record a part of it and um, I appreciated it. It was so amazing and like it's, do you feel like it's God that like you know pushes you? Oh yeah absolutely uh, with the words that I'm able to come up with articulate and to be able to express and when we first when I first wrote this book my team you know, didn't think, they was like, hey, you know, this is a little touchy, you know, a black guy, I'm an ex-ball player, so it's like, what do you know about with young girls? But the one thing that I've always done well is I love to uh, observe behavior. And so I observed the behavior of my, of, of my sisters and I saw some of the challenges that they went through and some of the, the difficulties that a lot of young women and just young girls are dealing with is the self-love. But And what happened is, is that if you don't have self-love, it's hard for you to actually know what love really is. So you move through life with a lot of ideas yeah. and with a lot of pictures. And so what I always encourage young girls is that no one can give to you what you don't give to yourself. And that you have to be willing to give to yourself what you want others to give to you. Amen. Like so. people do need to hear that. And girls do need to, you know, love themselves. And, you know, they're possibly hating themselves for something that someone else is, is envious of them for exactly. like i hate my face i hate my lips i hate my butt like i'm like i'm like trying to get my shit injected excuse my french i'm trying to like get fabulous on their level and like you know maybe it's something that they hate themselves for this girl's too skinny i'm doing jumping jacks like it's going out of style trying to get skinny right, you know what right. i mean and it's just like a perspective like you can't understand like and so you get out of your own mind and open your eyes to a bigger, you right, know, picture. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I really, so. um, I'm interested and intrigued about your book, and I cannot wait to read more because you have spoken to my heart, and I want to share this with my daughters. I have three little girls, and I feel like the influence in your writing is something that I want to share, yeah. you know, with others. Yeah, and I think touching uh, letters to a young queen, and it's available on Amazon. Barnes and Nobles, Kindles, iTunes, and also I have a book for young men, Hello King. So I speak to both uh, girls and boys, and I work with a lot of kids in group homes and foster care. And so it's just really my life mission uh, to continue to build young people because you can't change a tree until you ch begin to change the fruits. Love and so, uh, and I think the only way we change the next generation is we have to influence what's coming behind us. Yeah, like everybody needs to check out this book, buy it. Um, read it, learn it, love it, live your bi life by it. Um, every little girl needs to hear the scripture that this man has put his heart and soul into this book and buy it. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. This is WBUZ95.com. That was Jay Barnett. How awesome. I'm just touched by his stories and um, his book. I bought a copy for Anjali. 
Um, what is it, Christy? Can you tell us about the book? Yeah, it's called Letters to a Young Queen, Redefining Their Throne. Um, and that was one of the books that he was getting like honored for there. So yeah. um, I'm not going to lie, not quite sure what it's about. but It's, it's a motivational It's a motivational book. It's got some motivational quotes in it. It's um, uplifting for, like, young women. Um, I bought a copy for my daughter, which I plan on reading as well. And it's just supposed to be a a really moving book that was so moving, in fact, that it was, you know, got an award for it. You know, it's supposed to be really good. I've been looking at something new to read. I got a copy right here that I'm, I'm looking at that I bought from him, and it it's a collection of letters and poems uh, for young girls, so it's got to be um, a good read for you know any age. Yeah, if you have a breakup and you're feeling low and you just you know get you some Ben and Jerry's, watch I um, watch list, but read read this book, <laughs> Letters to a Young Queen. Get your Ben and Jerry's, cry it out, and listen to these passionate words. Pick you up, build you back up, women. And make you feel fabulous again, because we all deserve to feel fabulous no matter what. Don't let anything keep you down. Things are going to get you down, but don't let them keep you down. Well said. There you go. Thanks. Thanks. So, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Kelly, what's the latest on your scoop? Um, Well, last week we talked about the Thai soccer team that was trapped in the cave. Well, they're all now rescued as of Tuesday so that's fantastic yeah I was getting my nails done um, on Monday <laughs> three <and> hours <laughs> <laughs> for three whole hours of my <laughs> life and I always get stuck with someone who doesn't understand a lick of English so I can have no no opportunity to communicate with anyone you know like I'm you know I'm a talker I mean for heaven's sakes I have a show like <laughs> I'm sitting there in silence for all this time. I can't do anything <laughs> with my hands because they have mm-hmm. foil wrapped on them. So and, I never go um, reading the CNN on TV because they don't have any volume up. It's like, y'all aren't going to talk to me and I'm not going to be able to use my phone. Can you at least turn up some volume and let me hear about these boys instead of having to read about it? Like, that's why you watch TV. <laughs> so you can hear, you don't want to have to read it. So anyway, I read about it, and um, there was still some stuff happening, and not everyone was freed up whenever I was my latest as of Monday. Yeah, I think the coach and, like, another player or two were the last to get out. The little bit that I caught. Oh, yeah, no. Um, Yeah, the coach was the last one to come out, and then I guess, like, technically they they wrote an article that they had the – Four Navy SEALs were the last people to walk out of there, and everybody was fine. Everybody made it. Uh, I think eight of them were transported to the hospital. Yeah, they were stuck down there for 18 days. Well, what I was reading on TV instead of watching and listening to um, was they said that they were going to be sent for two days and quarantined away from their, their – once they were saved, they were supposed to be in quarantine for two days before they could even see their parents. So I would be, like, crazy. If that was my child, I would be crazy. They would be like, just let her see. Let her see the child. She's been doing nothing but drinking coffee for, like, the past week or longer than that. How long were they actually in there? The 18 days. 18, yeah. I would have been doing nothing but drinking coffee for 18 days, a nervous wreck with my hair standing up on top of my head, pissed off, walking around in circles in a hospital waiting to be able to see my child. Mm -hmm. Like that's. I would have tried to figure out a way to get that scuba gear on. I can assure and... <laughs> you yeah. that two days quarantine my Excuse ass. Me, guys. I would be like, oh no, I'd have like hazmat started, suit. Yeah, I'd have started putting some uh, scuba gear on myself. Yeah. And uh, I would have had to get like quarantine, like put away because there was no way you were keeping me from my baby for that long. Right. I was going to, I was going to uh, save my child. <laughs> 18 days. That's a nightmare. Yeah, my brother is a um, underwater welder certified, and I would have sent him down there. Like, go get my kid. Yeah, <laughs> like now. Or you do not have Christmas <laughs> yeah. again, ever. <laughs> Fun fact. A little side note. I used to want to be a welder when I was younger. Really? 
Yeah. You still can. It, That'd it be awesome. Well, if you can dream well it, you can do it. Stylists. One or the other. Oh, you wow. Know? They're yeah. kind of kind running the same. You should just do They're both. They're just alike. <laughs> They're exactly the same. Actually, one of Adam's good friend is an underwater welder, and he works for Mr. John, our um, landlord, oh, as cool. a matter of fact. Hmm. Um, fun fact. Um, Adam, I'm actually, fine. that's how he knows Mr. John is from welding with him. So you'll have to ask Adam. Maybe he can get you some gear and take you underneath <laughs> some water so that you can where fire that, something. It's where that raging Cajun comes from. Yeah. Did you, did you want to do underwater welding or did you just want to weld? Just weld because I just think it's really cool. I think yeah. that it's a really like cool um, like skill to have. Like It's something that I notice on well, like things like chairs like i know yeah. like the soldering the and stuff yeah you can like see the pattern you can mm-hmm. see when somebody knows what they're doing and when they don't so but kelly I, what I, is i'm sorry Christy, no what are you saying? no totally cool <laughs> nothing really. what are you doing what's like your big plan like what's your go-to thing that you're going to do in new york um so i actually got tickets to go see phantom of the opera on Friday, oh. so we're gonna go to Broadway and see the show, and I'm super excited about that. That's the main thing that we're doing. Like, bought the tickets way in advance, ready to go. Other than that, though, I'm I don't really have a whole lot of plans. I'm meeting one of my friends that lives out there, and we're pretty much just gonna run around, do whatever. Uh, I told her to just write down like the gotta go to places for me and where she wants to where she wants to take me to her favorite places whatever she wants i'm just ready to see the city oh yeah Yeah. it's beautiful it's dirty but beautiful and um there's nothing quite like it like it's it's like unbelievable how much like media is all over every single thing everywhere that there's like a side of a building there is a enormous screen It it is just really it's it's um, overwhelming how much media you see in, like, one spot. Like, Times Square is crazy. Um, so Kelly and I actually had the honor of interviewing Juvenile together. Old Juve. Um, I was happy to see that he's a family man. You know, he was very, you know, respectful. He was, you know, very kind. He was concerned about, you know, um, his family and having them there to, you know, be there for this influence award um, it was super cool. He's always been someone that I've listened to even before I was supposed to be listening to music. I was because I had a brother who was six years older than me and he was really, really cool. He had this Galaxy 500 with these like gold spokes on it with some slap in the trunk. And um, we were always listening to stuff with very explicit lyrics. And um, yeah, so. I definitely have had my fair share of listening to Back That Ass Up. So, Juvenile, he's pretty awesome. Kelly, what do you think? Oh, I loved him. I loved doing the interview with him. I like that he, you know, always made sure to include everybody. Like, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't all about himself. Like, yeah, I released this, and I did that. No, he made sure that he credited everybody and that no one was left out. And that, you know, he made sure that we knew it was a group project. Yeah. Yeah, he did. And I, that cool. Yeah, that was cool. He thanked the fans. Um, yeah, he was talking about, you know, and Manny Fresh is the one that signed him. Um, Turk, Baby. Yeah, it, it was cool that he wanted to recognize everybody for that helped out him achieving what he did. Yeah, he is really, really, really cool. I'm glad that I was able to meet him. Um, so I guess we're going to go ahead and play this interview. This is the one and only Juvenile. This is Kelly with WBZ95 recording live, and I got Juvenile here tonight. Oh, my God. I am starstruck. How you doing tonight? I'm good. Enjoying it. Thankful for all the people supporting me 20 plus years and also being honored tonight, me and my dog, man. So it's a good thing. I saw that you had um, your daughter here tonight. Daughter, wife, son, everybody. That's really awesome. I love that you're a family man and still keeping it real after all of these years. 
Is there anything that you're working on, any project or anything that you are excited about these days? Uh, me and Manny doing a 400 degrees, a new four, uh, 400 degrees reloaded. But other than that, just buying businesses, opening up stores, stuff like that. Well, I have the original 400 degrees, and I will get the new one. It is so amazing to meet you. This is um, Kelly M. with Guilty Till Proven Fabulous. Hey, how you doing tonight? Cooling, cooling. So you got the Hip Hop Legend Award tonight. How does that make you feel? Your city kind of giving you a little payback, a little bit of recognition for everything that you've been doing, all the music you've produced out of this city all these I kinda years. Like, I kind of like I really, I really enjoy getting this award, especially sharing something with Manny because me and Manny actually did all this stuff together and not just me, uh, Wayne and Turk and, uh, and BG, but it feels good to get something with my dog because it, it's actually a group effort, you know, and a lot of the time the artists get the, get the awards and never the producers, so I'm kind of glad it's both of us together. Right, absolutely, and you know, we got a little interview with Manny earlier, so I'm super glad that we were able to get you both here together tonight and able to get a little word from y'all. We're honored to be here with y'all, and you know, the city honestly always thanks y'all. I'm from New Orleans as well. I, you know, I live in Baton Rouge here, but I'm from here, and uh, so grew up listening to you, grew up listening to him and all the music that y'all produced together, and so it's fantastic to sit here in front of you and be able to ask you questions about such a, a, a such an amazing award for an establishment that you know has been around for so long and it's the it's the 20 year huh 20 a year november 3rd we plan on doing a party for the city or something i don't know exactly I'm trying to put it together now but 20 years that's incredible juvie that shows all our age right now and i've been like really trying hard not to show mine <laughs> <laughs> 20 years 20 years like that's a legacy. That's a whole legacy that you get to leave behind. That's fantastic to be able to have released such an amazing project and it still be alive today. You got to be really proud of yourself. I am, but the fans proud of all of y'all. Really. The fans make it possible. To be honest, when we, when you actually go in the studio and you're doing those songs, you don't know what's going to happen. It just so happened to be it, 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 music turned out to be good. Well, that was our one and only Mr. Juvenile from the '99 to the 2000s. So excited to have met him. He was awesome. Super cool. Super awesome. Kelly, I'll let you take the lead on that one because I could tell that y'all had some NOLA kind of love going on. And um, I think that you did that quite nice. He was awesome. Y'all had some mutual understandings. I thought that was really cool about New Orleans. And, you know, we all went through the same stuff, you know, with Katrina and all that. And these people went through that stuff with us. I mean, you know, him, Manny, that's people that are from New Orleans. Yeah, it was definitely uh, really cool to get to talk to him in person because, you know, we, you know, he talked about how it's the 20-year anniversary this year. So that he's been around a long time, and he really has been an icon in the city for so long. So it's, it's, uh, it's crazy being a native and growing up, listening to so much of his music and Manny's music and everybody else to get to see him there in real time and get to talk to him a little bit about it, especially, you know, 20 years, that's really, I mean, in the music world, you know, that's, music world is dog years. So 20, to have some so long and still. Yeah, like, okay, so uh, it makes me feel very old. Um, 20 years, like, kind of hurts my feelings a little bit, but I remember, like, like, hands on the knees, ass pointed at the TV, Back that ass up, and I am trying to m mimic every booty shaking woman on that music video. No, absolutely. I remember being in middle school, just like middle school, at like the little sock cops that we used to have, and the but the clean version was playing. So it back wasn't, that thing up. Yeah, oh yeah. Ba -ba 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 back the thing up. Yeah. Well, so there's the more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the cliches they never die they never do <laughs> it's the wonderful world of when in Rome. so um yeah this was such a fun experience i want to give a shout out to al our producer for making this possible you know for giving us the opportunity to go and you know have this moment to get better at our craft and interview and you know, just really enjoy being host of a radio show. And it was really awesome. So thank you to Al. You're amazing. Thank you, Al. Thanks, Al. So I want to thank you ladies so much for being here. Um, Jennifer, 
Yes, ma'am. You ma were so much fun. I have so many pictures that I plan um, on posting of us acting a fool. So I want to thank you for all of that. This has been such a fun experience knowing you, girl. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so, for including me. Yeah, thanks for being here. You can check Jennifer out on Instagram. Yes, my personal Instagram is Mrs. Jen Myers. And um, my website is articleandthread.com. And you can follow us on Instagram at Article and Thread. Yes, fabulous boutique, free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Check her out. She's amazing. Also, I wanted to thank our favorite, favorite hostess with the mostest for Guilty Till Proven Fabulous. Thank you so much for being here and taking the time when I know that you're traveling, acting crazy, having to be, you know, doing this right now. Thank you, Kelly M. You are amazing and such a great friend. I had so much fun with you this weekend. Yeah, I'm really glad that we got to do it together. And, you know, you're one of my besties, too. So I got to do it with one of my best friends as well. So that was awesome. And we took some really great prom picks because... I don't know what the hell we were doing, but our posing was just really, really off and really awkward. But, um, yeah, we'll have those on online and for you all to view. Um, those were fun because that, that was at the end and we had to have, like, a couple of drinks. So mm, a couple fun. turns into, like, ten, but, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I, I was just pretty – I was just happy cruising the whole time. I'm just bebopping – bouncing around you yeah know, see with me myself. whenever i start having a little fun and there may be like a little bit of drinking it's just i'm just like bouncing off the walls yeah I, there was a lot of bouncing it was, it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun i wish you could have been there christy yeah i know <laughs> christy I always misses out fun. on everything fun she I always know. does she sometimes does You're... it to herself but <laughs> it always happens oh excuse me I'm no, so well, next time you can't miss. You. I know, but you know what? It's always because I'm taking care of that salon, making sure it's open. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, true that. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm being the responsible one. Yes, yeah. well, thank you for being something. responsible. You could have been stuck doing something worse than making money. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, I'm not I'm not hating it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at Princess Producer, uh, her interview wasn't the best of quality. We weren't able to use it, but... I loved her. She was awesome. I'm going to email her and try to get her on the show soon. Yeah. She produces the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She told me something so solid. She said, I asked her, you know, about any advice to young girls or whatever. And she was like, you know, I'm going to, she's like, do something that you love so much that you're willing to do it for free. I'm like, word up. Mm. Like, that's how I started doing hair. I was, did it for free, you know, was mm -hmm gapping people up um, in my mama's kitchen, you know, and I loved it so much. That I made a career out of it. And I love that. She said that she was, she said, don't chase money, chase dreams. And, um, I really loved her, man. I'm so disappointed that there was just so much noise that we couldn't use her interview, but I'm definitely, definitely, definitely going to try to get her on the show. Cause she had yeah. some really inspiring advice to give. Yeah, I'd love to talk to her again as well. Yeah, she was pretty awesome. Um, and Christy, yes. thank you, my friend, for always being here and being my little co-hostess. Well, that's what I'm here for. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in again to WBZ95, the Glitter and Gossip. And as always, thank you for letting us dazzle you tonight. This is Kelly Hutchinson Chapley. You can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Kelly Hutchinson or on Facebook at Kelly Hutchinson Chapley. Or you can look me up on Snapchat where I am acting the absolute fool pretty much 90% of the time. So um, hit us up. We're always looking for great products or stories or anything that you think would be a great idea to discuss on air. So you can hit us up, WBUZ.com, WBUZ95, excuse me, dot com, or find any of us on social media. We are always looking. And I just wanted to tell you ladies that I love doing this show with you, and that's a wrap.